our second minister is here. I'm talking about no other person than the man that God used six years ago when we were to start this particular church. Each time we are approaching this season, his thought comes to my memory and you know, you have some fathers, they will tell you, don't worry, I'll give you money, go and do it. I'll give you money, go and do it. It will give you money, it will advise you, and it will be there with you when you are doing it. Let us celebrate this man of God. I remember six years ago, a night that we had to start this church, we had to commence, we had to start our first service, our inaugural service. We had all waited, we had walked and walked and walked till about 9, 30, 10. And he said, and we were still fixing the bulbs. He said, Damola, you know what? You and your guys can go home. Go, don't worry, go home. I'll be, there with, I'll be here with them until they finish it. Lo and behold, we came in the morning, everywhere was bright. Let us be on our feet as we celebrate our Father in the Lord, Pastor Wally Daniels. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm sure I can't remember some of the things that Mola was saying. But I thank God that we, we had the privilege that God made certain things possible. And the Bible says, it is God that worketh in us both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So whatsoever that has been done, it must have been God who did it. Now, I would like that you then close your eyes and worship God with us for five minutes or thereabout, whichever way you like. You may like to kneel down with me. You may like to roll on the floor. You may like to sit down if you like, but just ensure that for the next few minutes, you will be worshiping God from your own heart, and let it be from your heart as we worship the King of Kings. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, and all he has done for me my very soul shall shine
exhort you in this place. Father, we ask that you will be exalted in the lives of your children in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for everyone that is here this afternoon that no one will return the way he or she had come in the name of Jesus. I pray that the grace of the Lord will rest upon you and that by the time you will be leaving this place, you will live a new person. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Can you take your Bible as you read Hebrews chapter 11? Hebrews chapter 11. I'm sure we are here to just share the word of God together. But let's just take one or two prayers before we march on. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. Hebrews 11 27. And I would like that we read it together. Are we ready? Can we go? I am praying for you this morning. I mean this afternoon. It's afternoon now. I'm praying that God will help you to see the invisible. Amen. You're not saying the kind of amen that I want. Amen. May the Lord give you the grace to see the invisible. Amen. You see, when you see a man like Moses, he became what you've been reading or what you will know, what you will hear about him because he was able to see the invisible. What others were not seeing, he saw it. Can you rise to your feet and pray that one prayer? Pray it for yourself as we go into the word of the Lord. Say, O oh Lord, my Father, 
open my eyes to see the invisible. What is not visible for others? What others are not seeing? Lord, open my eyes to see the invisible. Can you open your mouth and talk to the Lord now? Lord, let my eyes be open to see the invisible. Lord, let my eyes be open to see the invisible. Lord, let my eyes be open to see the invisible. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again. Lord, I pray for your children here that you will open the eye of everyone. That those things that the Lord will like that you see, that will be for the fulfillment of your destiny. May the Lord open your eyes to see them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Sit down. God bless you. I, I saw that the theme of your retreat or conference is rest assured. And I am praying for you that the God will give you the confidence to be assured of his plan for your life in the name of Jesus. I'm sure many of you would have heard uh, the, the saying, uh, winners don't quit. How many of you have heard that word before? You have not heard it? If you have heard, raise up your hand. You've heard winners don't quit. You see, the truth of the matter is that those who don't quit, they are saying something that those who are quitting could not see. It is easy to talk like that, you know. Sometimes people gather together and talk and talk and pontificate, you know, say some things. But after you have finished all those words, all of the things that you have said make no meaning to the people. Because what you are seeing, I mean, what you are saying, they cannot see it. When Moses came to Egypt, after 40 years, and he started talking about one promised land and that they had to leave. The people were wondering what's wrong with him. What was he saying? Even the people that were to be delivered. And so when there was one little challenge, just as in the passage the man of God earlier on read, and then they told them that you have to do the, straw, you have to do the work and nobody will give you straw. You have to still accomplish what you are doing the people turned against Moses and began to fight him because there was something Moses was seeing and they could not see it. Even when they got to the Red Sea, they began, the Bible said they began to murmur against God and against Moses because there was one thing Moses was seeing and they could not see. Even when they have crossed the Red Sea, miraculously, and then they go to the other side and they saw the Egyptian perish in the sea. Because the water brought their body and, you know, they were there at the shore of the sea. They saw the miracles. They spite that. What they have never had before, that the sea will part ways and people will walk on dry land. They saw it themselves. So it was not like as if they didn't see the miracle. It was not like as if somebody was telling them. They saw it. And so... After a little challenge again of no water for some time, instead of saying the God who did that one will do it, they could they began to murmur again. It is because Moses was saying something and they couldn't see it. And God himself knew. And so God, wanting to help them at a point in time, told Moses to gather them together, that he would speak to them himself. 
And then Moses gathered them together to Mount Sinai. And the Bible says, and Mount Sinai was all together on fire. And when they saw the mountain burning, and they saw the old thunder, they saw lightning, they ran back and told Moses and said, is this the way God is speaking to you? If this is the way he's speaking to you, let him be speaking to you. Whatsoever he says, come and tell us. And that was how the people lost the opportunity of meeting God. And so it, it continued that it was only Moses that was saying something, and they were not saying. I am praying for you this afternoon. That which you need to see to keep running and finish your race. May the Lord open your eyes to see in the name of Jesus. Amen. To be rest assured. It is going to be a product of your being able to connect to the divine nature. You can be, it's not an issue of persuasion. You know, it's not an issue of excitement or somebody trying to excite you and tell you, God is good. Say it, God is good. Oh, yes, you may shout, God is good, gyrate everywhere with everybody. And, but by the time you leave the place, the reality will be done on you and you'll be wondering. When you get back home and you couldn't get something, when you get back to your office and then there is problem, you'll be wondering where is the God that they said is good because you have not seen something. It is possible to come to a conference like this and then you see uh, preachers, you met men who will get you excited and you shout, you run around, and, but by the time you leave and you get home or you get to your office or you get somewhere, and then you, fail, you see the reality that is on ground again, then you begin to doubt whether God was good. Because you have not been able to connect to the nature that is seeing the invisible. I am praying for you this afternoon. Whatsoever is not allowing you to see the invisible, may the Lord remove you from your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Moses was like that earlier on, before he ran until he began to see God. He also was running. But when he began to see God, when he began to hear God, when his nature, when he was able to get the divine nature that could connect to God, when he's talking, others will be wondering. And even Moses himself will be wondering what's wrong with them. Can't they see? Or oh, the reason is because he is a different person. I am praying for you the Lord will make you different. Amen. You know, you remember the prayer I prayed that by the time you'll be returning, you will return another person in the name of the Lord Jesus. The promises of God will never look real to you if you don't have the divine nature. You will read it. They will lift it out. They will say, confess it. Say it after me. You will say it, but they won't look real. You'll be wondering, you'll be questioning yourself and questioning everything. Is this thing real? Can this thing be possible? Deep in your heart, even when you are saying it and confessing it with your mouth, deep in your heart, you'll be asking the question, are this thing real? Because when the, war, the realities of this world, when they hit you, if you don't have the, the divine nature, you will see those promises of God as impossible. I am praying for you this afternoon. May the grace to see the reality of the word of God, may it come upon your life in the name of the Lord Jesus. In the book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, 2 Peter, Second Peter chapter 1. Can somebody read from verse 1 for us?
and our Savior Jesus Christ, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according to his divine power, had given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us an exceedingly great, an exceeding great and precious promise that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption of Corruption that is in the world through lust. I continue? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. There are some things that I will want us to quickly see so that we can understand the process that you need to understand and follow for you to begin to ex experience what is called the assurance, the perfect assurance in the Lord. In the passage that we have just read, in verse 3, it says, according as his divine power had given unto us all, all things pertaining unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. For you, to start the process of getting the assurance and be assured in the Lord, you need the knowledge, personal and full knowledge of God. You see, let me tell you, what most of the people in the church have is the knowledge of God through their pastor. They just have the knowledge of God through their pastor. What that one is saying about God is what they know. They don't have personal experience of God. And when you don't have personal experience with God, when the enemy comes and shakes you, all you will be referring to will be what the pastor said. But when you have the full and personal knowledge of him, you'll be talking like Paul, that I know whom I believe. And that is where assurance and this rest assurance, that is where it comes from. The starting point is a personal and full knowledge of him. How do you know the Lord? What have you known about the Lord? One of the prayers that you must keep praying is that God should give you personal experience of himself. That I may know him. That should be your prayer. Otherwise, if you only know God from the experience of your pastor or your teacher or anybody, in the days of serious trial, you may run away. And if you are going to have joy in the Lord, if you are going to be happy in the Lord, then you need the personal experience. You, know, you remember the man called Moses? You remember that Moses ran away from Egypt. He ran away from Egypt for 40 years. And do you know what was the question they asked him? They said, who made you a leader and a judge over us? And the Bible says, and Moses ran at that saying. You may be wondering, it was another problem that chased Moses away until you come to read about Moses 40 years after. And 40 years after, when God came to Moses and asked Moses and told Moses, now... That project that you abandoned, it's time to resume. The deliverance of the people, you have to resume now and go and deliver them. How many of you remember the question Moses asked God? He said, the people will ask me, eh? who sent you? God bless you. He said, they will ask me who sent you. So what is your name? 
And God said, I am that I am. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is my name forever. So Moses now knew who was sending him. It was not, now you may not understand it unless you read the book of Acts chapter 7. The Acts chapter 7 from verse 20, the Bible says, Moses knew while he was in Egypt that God was going to use him to deliver the people. Because you may be thinking that it was at the burning bush that Moses was just discovering, the, the calling was just coming. It was not there. Before he left Egypt, he knew. And the Bible says, and he was surprised that the people did not understand. So Moses knew while he was in Egypt that God was going to use him to deliver them. But the same Moses who was trying to deliver the people knew not the God who was sending him. Are you understanding something there? Because if he had known him, would he be asking him again 40 years after? And that's even one of the dangerous things that you see in the church. You see many people who are talking and preaching on the people on the pulpit, who know not God? Uh, you may be asking, is it possible? Yes. Go and read the book of Psalm. Psalm uh, uh, First Samuel chapter, from ch chapter 1. You will run across the story of uh, the man, young man, I think chapter 3 or so. You will run across the story of one man called Samuel. Abi? And the Bible says, and Samuel was ministering unto the Lord. Then some chapters later, the Bible says, and Samuel knew not the Lord. Uh -uh. The man who was ministering earlier chapter, now you are saying he knew not the Lord. So what was he ministering before? What he was ministering was what they told him to go and say. When you get there, say like this, say like this, say like this, and that was what he was doing. So there was no personal experience with God. So it is even possible for the man on the pulpit not to know God. They will just tell him, go and say this. When you get there, say like this. And then we will go and say it. Now, that is a double calamity. Because if the man who is leading you does not know God, then you are in trouble. But for yourself to be assured in the Lord, to have rest of mind, you need to know the Lord that you are serving. And so, I will be so happy if you will rise from this place. And then your prayer will be, God, reveal yourself to me. So that you begin to pray for a personal experience. So that not everybody will just come and say something and then you get carried away because the man have a sugar-coated mouth. And then you begin to follow errors. But when you know the Lord yourself, it is going to be impossible for somebody to just sweep you off. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. A louder hallelujah. hallelujah. So it is this personal experience with the Lord, personal encounter with the Lord, that will actually magnify the promises of God before you. You remember the young man who was working with the prophet called Elisha? You remember in Dothan, the young man came out and saw army and saw soldiers filled everywhere. And he ran back to Elisha and said, sir, we are in trouble. He wants to say, what? What's the meaning of that? He said, if you see enemy, they are filled with the place. And the man said, don't worry, those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And the man was asking the old guy and said, who are the people with us? It's me and you here now. And he said, please, God, open the young man's eye. So by the time the eye of the young man was opened and he actually saw that those who are with them are more than those who are against them, what happened to him? His faith jumped off. Doubt jumped out. Fear jumped out. The reason why you doubt the promises of God the reason why you are shaking is because something is not there that will magnify the promises of God in your life. And it is the personal encounter. Once you have a personal encounter with the Lord, the word of God, the promises of God before you will be magnified. It's like the magnifying glasses. 
when the letters are tiny, you may not be able to read it well. You know, there are some drugs, those things inside it, the little thing they put inside, you will write them tiny, you may not be able to read them. But when you put the magnifying lens, you'll be able to see something like that. To many of us, the promises of God are tiny, you cannot see them. But it is the encounter with the Lord that will magnify them. You will see them clearly. Praise the Lord. You know, the encounter Moses had, God told him, he said, go and set the people free. I'm sending you to go and set the people free. And the man was saying, set who free? Me to go and feed Pharaoh? Ha. And you know what God told him? He said, what is in your hand? He said, rod. He said, throw you down. And he threw down the rod. And you know what happened? The rod became serpent. And when the rod became serpent, Moses did, did what any reasonable human being would do. And what was he? He fled. And as he was running, God said, come, 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 come. He said, go and hold it by the tail. And then, you know, you can imagine Moses must have been lecturing God and say, maybe serpent is not dangerous in heaven. But the serpent here on earth, <laughs> they are very dangerous. You can't hold them by the tail. If you hold them by the tail, you are gone. And God said, don't worry, hold it. And he held the serpent by the tail, and it became what? A rock. Moses got the message because once God is involved, dangerous things will become harmless. And so that settled in mind of Moses. That's an encounter with the Lord. To so a Moses, his faith in the promises of God were becoming magnified. He wasn't seeing them as tiny and unreal things. He was beginning to see them as things that are real. So I go, I will be with you. It became real to Moses that once God is with me, even the dangerous Pharaoh will not be able to do anything. I am praying for you this afternoon. May the Lord help you so that his promises for you will be magnified. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. It is this magnifying power of the promises of God that will allow you to see the world the way the world is. You see, when you see the promise of God magnified, then you will see the rottenness of the world and the things of the world. You remember the man called Isaiah. Isaiah initially was saying, woe to everybody, woe to the king, woe to everybody, until he saw the Lord until he saw the glory of God, until he saw God in his glory. And then you know what he began to say? He said, woe is me. I am in the midst of people with unclean lips. So all of those things that were exciting him about people, he, they just died immediately. Immediately he had an encounter with God. When you, when you have a personal encounter with the Lord, all the traps that the world and the world system are setting for you, you know, with money, with posts, with fame, all of those things, they will just die. Immediately you meet the Lord. Those things will just die. You will see them and put them behind you. You know, remember Satan? He was dangling the world and the glory of the world before Jesus. He says, the whole thing is given to me and I will give them to you if you bow down and worship me. What did Jesus, how did Jesus answer? He said, get thee behind me. Once you have an encounter with the Lord, you will put the world and the glories of the world behind you. They won't be before you. You won't be running after them. You put them. Even when you have become something, you become anything, vice chancellor, you know, managing director, anything, you will put all those things we are behind you. They won't be before you that you'll be behaving like this. No. They will be behind you. So even when you are the governor, you know, because you, 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 you have placed those things, you have seen God in his glory, all the things of the world, you put them behind you. You come in like ordinary person. Praise the Lord. A loud hallelujah. For you to see the rottenness of the world system, and the glories of this world, the promises of God must be magnified before you. 
and for the promise of God to be magnified, then you need an encounter with the Lord. I'm trying to put them so that you don't forget. You see, you'll be afraid. You'll be shaking. When they threaten you, you'll be shaking. You'll be scared because you are seeing the things of the world big. And the only reason why you see the things of the world big is because you have not seen the promises of God in their magnificence. One young man called Evan Robert. You know, he was taken to his vice chancellor. And they, they, they accused him and said, this boy is accusing everybody. He said everything is nothing. Even when we told him that, are you saying even the vice chancellor is nothing? He said anything, everything in this world is nothing. And so they brought him before, before the man. And he said, no, they said you said everything is nothing. He said, yes, even your seat is nothing. And then the man expelled him from the university. But he went ahead and conquered the nation for God. That even where the vice chancellor can never enter, the president, they will call him. And they, where, whereas the vice chancellor is sitting, when he comes in, everybody will rise up. Why? He saw the grandeur of the promises of God. I am praying for you. May the Lord give you an encounter with the Lord. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. So don't forget the projection. You need an encounter. It is the encounter with the Lord that will magnify the promise of God before you. When you begin to see the promise of God in their grandeur, you will see the rottenness, the littleness, or the, how small the things of the world are. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you something. You know, I joined this ministry in 94, and then one of those few people who had been with the GO long time, before that time, told me something when we went on a, a, mission, a missionary walk, sometimes in the 90s. And then he said that when they were in a place called Makoko and Gio was doing deliverance for people, that one man came to them one day and said, sir, come. And then he said, they said, your leader here is a PhD holder. He said, yes. And that he studied abroad. He said, yes. He said, you better not allow somebody to be playing pranks for you. You don't, don't allow somebody to do for one night for you. You one day will just carry your money and run away. How can somebody study a happy age from abroad? Eh? And he will come and be staying inside Makoko and be doing deliverance for people. Because what the man was seeing, those people couldn't see it. And so to them, is it possible for somebody to have PhD from UK? And then you will now come inside Makoko and be doing deliverance for people. I'm saying, come out, come out. And you know, is it possible? He will not look for somebody somewhere like Ikoyi and somewhere to go and start something. Say, don't allow this man to defraud you. He will just carry your money one way or the other one way. Why were they talking like that? What the man was seeing, they couldn't see it. And now what he was seeing, what he was seeing that God wants to do, they are beginning to unfold. What he was seeing that time, some may not see it. That's why I'm praying for you. May the Lord give you the grace to see the invisible. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And so it is when you are able to see the grandeur of the promise of God, that is when you will be able to escape the, the lost of this world. Because the enemy will always want to entice you. Oh, he did it for Jesus. He will do it for everybody. He will bring something to you and tell you, bow down and I will give it to you. Some young, you know, young men and women came to me one day and asked my sister that they are, they are good, they sing well. And that we are telling them not to go for... All of these, uh, what is this thing they go for, those who sing? 
uh, Motina, Kiniko, all these uh, where they can win money. And then we are telling them not to go. And that uh, those who are not singing as good as they are that have left, they are making money. You see, and I told them, I said, look, in the world, singing is industry. How do they call it? Entertainment. But in the church, it is ministry. And what is ministry? You are, you are, you are working on souls to bring them to God. So they are two different things. We are not into industries. We are into what? Ministry. If you invite uh, uh, those sweet talkers, Kileman Kwimo, motivational speakers, if you want to invite one to your program, you probably will have agreed how much you will pay him. Eh? Is that not so? But if you are inviting a preacher, and the preacher is discussing with you how much you will pay. You have seen the deputy of Satan. Because in this side, it is ministry. Whatsoever they want to appreciate you with, you take it and go. Because it is ministry. You are into business of soul winning. They are into the business of money making. So they are not the same thing. We are not the same. And so unless you begin to, unless you have an encounter with the Lord, you will not understand those things. You will be comparing yourself to them. You will think you are running the same race. No, you are not. The gift of God in you is not for you to make money. Am I confusing you? The gift of God inside you is not for money making. The gift of God in you is to set God to the world. And whatsoever it will please God to profit you from it, he will send it to you. And I will send you something, I will tell you something that you may not like, but I trust that if you, God will help you to take it so that you can run with it. Even the money that you are working for is not your money. The salary that you are earning is not your own. The business that you are making and the money you are making is not your own. What did the Bible say? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything in this world belongs to God. And so whichever one is running through you is still not your own. You are supposed to be a pipe to send it to where he wants it to go to. You remember the story of the man who built, who said, my, my, this thing is now yielding, and I will break down my barn. Eh? And then I will build a larger one. And I will say to my soul, relax, and be enjoying yourself. Excuse me. Is there anything wrong in you saying, the money I have in GT is too much. Let me open another one in Access Bank. Is that not what the man was trying to say? Then why is it that God now said he's going to die that night? Have you asked yourself such question? Why will a man say this business is prospering well now? I want to I want to go and build another thing. And then the response from heaven is that tonight your soul shall be taken away from you. Why? Because in the kingdom when anything is sent to you, ask God, what is it for? That's why I say you may not like what I'm going to say. But you know, when God is bringing another level of breakthrough to you, you're already thinking of another car you are going to buy. And that's the difference. And that's the reason why even those who claim to be Christian are not at peace. They don't have joy. Because, you see, the world is created to give you trouble. 
And if you don't understand, you will be running and remain in trouble. Because once money is coming, it comes with its own demand. You may think that, oh, they are paying you 100,000 where you are working. If only your salary could be 200. Ah! But let me tell you, immediately you get the 200, it will become inadequate. Because as the 200 is coming in, it will come with another demand. Something will tell you the 10,000 naira shoe you used to buy is not good. The 5,000 naira bag you used to buy is, not, is too low for your level. And so, you, the television that you have at home that is just small is not go and buy a smart TV so that the TV will be the one that will cook food for you. So something will just, it will, they will come with their demand and you, you know you, the 200 will not be enough. When you get 500, it will not be enough. And then you that is living in uh, Isolo or Ijibo here now, by the time your money becomes 1 million, you say, no, I have to relocate here. Is that not what you are talking, thinking of? And then you say, let me go to Ajawu Estate. Or you are carried there. And then by the time they promote you and it's two million, you say, no, no, I have to go to Lekki now. And that is it. The money will never be enough. It is the system of the world. That's why, how the world is designed to make you restless forever. And then you that is managing now, and managing to, and you say, okay, let me go and do my master's in Lasso or in Unilag. Something will tell you, no, no, you have to go and do it in UK. And so even what God is blessing you for, so that you bless your brethren, you bless the church, you will still not do it. And that's exactly what the man did. And that's why God said, hey. so even when we are sending for you to do more, to, you still want to hold on to, you say tonight, we'll see how you will now begin to continue to. I am praying for you that the blessings of God will not become a trap for your life. Amen. You know, sometimes uh, you, you may not like people like us because we tell you the truth. But you see, like I tell them anywhere God sends me, I don't have a heaven that I will take you to. So that if you miss the heaven of God, and I will say, don't worry, I will take you here. I don't have, even me, I am an awaiting result. And so I cannot tell you there is a place that is, I will take you to. I can only encourage you to go to walk, to go to heaven that God has created. And that's only to tell you the truth. So that you will not only make the meaningful impact in your time, in your generation, you will also make heaven. I pray for you that the Lord will give you the grace in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Can I hear a better amen? amen? You see, there is one thing that is common to, if you read the Bible, if you read about the apostles, the patriarchs, the prophets, even the uh, generals that have gone to be with the Lord and the generals that are around, if you study them carefully, there is one thing that is common to all. And that thing that is common to those who are sincere men of God is that they have overcome lust, they have overcome greed. When you see some rascals who are brandishing the aircraft that they are buying, and then you, you are shouting and say, oh, if you see the, ah, the glory of God upon that man, because he's telling you he bought the third aircraft. And then you think aircraft is a sign that God is with the person. If money and all those things are signs that God was with somebody, then God was not with Jesus. Because when Jesus needed a court, he had to go and borrow. He had none. Are we telling you not to walk and be blessed? No. But you need an encounter with the Lord. So that what God wants to do, he will tell you. The Bible says, 
He made his act known to the children of Israel, but his ways are known to who? To Moses. May you not be one of those who will just see the act of God. It's good to see his act, oh. you see miracles, you see signs. But let me tell you, the fact that you got miracles does not mean you are going to get to heaven. After all, all of those who saw the miracle in the wilderness, they didn't get to the promised land. But to see his way, to know his ways, this is what God is doing. This is what he wants to do. That is what you should pursue. And that can only come from an encounter with the Lord. It is when you, you get that, that you understand what Paul is talking about in the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Hebrews chapter 4. I will soon be rounding up. If you are there, can you read loud for us? From verse 1. God bless you then. It says the word which they had did not mix with faith. And because of that, they do not what? They did not enter into rest. I am praying for, for you that the word of the Lord that you are hearing will mix with faith in your life. Amen. So that you can enter into rest. Those who are assured are those who have had an encounter with the Lord. Job was told by his wife, his friends, all of them. They told him to deny God, curse God, so that you can die and there, can, there is no remedy for you anymore. But you know what Job said? In Job 14, 14, he says, I will wait all the days of my appointed time. I know that it's a time appointed. I will wait. Why is he sure that there is an, a time appointed for his change to come? It is because of an encounter. Those who have an encounter with the Lord, sometimes they talk and you will say they are arrogant because they know the one that they have seen. They know the one they have met. You know how many times Pharaoh sent Moses out of his presence? Get out of my presence. Get out of my presence. Get out of my presence. Because he was looking at the infantry. How can you be talking to me like this? The reason is because anyone who has met God, they don't cring before men. Those who have had encounter with God don't cring before people. Because they know what the Lord has said. I'm not talking about arrogance. No. Those who have met God, there's one thing that you notice about them is humility. But they don't cling before men that when you say, do this, they say, okay, sir. Okay, sir, I will go and run and do it. Never. They will tell you, no, this is what the Lord told me. You can throw them away. You can do anything. You will come back and accept what they have said. Because it is from the presence of God that you get the authentic information. It is the man who has had an encounter and is meeting with the Lord that you, you can rely on what he's saying. You remember Moses and Joshua? They went to the mount. Moses went to collect the promise, um, 
the Ten Commandments. Moses was with the law for, in the presence of the law. Joshua was outside waiting. And then the people were polluting themselves. Aaron was raising, you know, the golden calf for them. And the people were gyrating and rejoicing. And there was noise in the camp. And Moses, Joshua was wondering and said, what is going on there? But Joshua could not go. He's waiting for his boss. And then God told Moses, see, see, your people are polluting themselves. They have raised idols. They have done this. They have done that. They have done that. And said, now go and sort out that matter. As Moses was coming out, he met Joshua who was waiting for him. And Joshua said, oh God, war don't enter camp. Oh. The enemy has come. There is war in the camp. Moses told him, he said, it's not war. The people are polluting themselves. You see, the right and the perfect information can only come from God's encounter. And so if you don't have an, an encounter with the Lord, you don't get the right thing about your life, somebody will just come and tell you one lie, and then you'll be running with it. That's why I'm praying for you. For you to have the rest, to be rest assured, you need the encounter with God. It is when you do that, that you know what is going to happen. You know what the Lord has said concerning you. You know what is God is saying. And then even when anybody is saying, yeah, this thing you are doing, you will regret it later. You say, no, I won't regret it. Because you know what you are talking about. I am praying for you this, month, this afternoon. May the Lord grant you an encounter. In the mighty name of Jesus. I used to tell people, some like to run from one mountain to the other to go and pray. No problem. You can even go to any valley. But I would rather advise you to go and pray to encounter God. So that when you have an encounter with him, you are talking to him as a father, talking to, your son, to the son or to the daughter. He tells you what he wants you to do. You know what he's planning for you. You don't need to run to any mountain. You don't need to run anywhere. Because he will talk to you anywhere. I agree that you may need a retreat. You may need a time off from all your hustles and, you know, and bustlings and all of those things. It may be anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be one mountain or one valley. It could be anywhere, secluded, prayer city, redemption camp, anywhere, an hotel around that is lock yourself up there. You can have it three days, any days you like with the Lord. But what you need is an encounter with the Lord so that you know how the Lord is speaking to you. You understand what the Lord wants to do with your life and you know what he wants you to, how he wants you to do it. There was a way that was shot out of the promised land. Eleven days, they will get to the promised land. But God said, no, don't follow that way. Follow the way of the wilderness. They don't know the way of the wilderness. They know that one. But God said, no, follow this one. And Moses said, this is what the one God said we should follow. They fought with Moses. They argued with him. But they had no choice. They followed him. The way of the wilderness, they followed. The way Moses said they should follow, God said they should follow, eventually ended them in the rest, before the Red Sea. And then they came to Moses here, but it's often, this is your strong head. You will not listen to any other person. You behave like as if you are the only one that knows everything. This is your Ori Kukun. See where you have brought us now. Are we going to enter the Red Sea? And then to worsen their situation, they saw Pharaoh and his host coming. And then as the people were complaining about money, God said, Moses said, God, what next? God said, Tell them that the Egyptians they are seeing, they will see them no more. Ha! Ah. Which Egyptian are you talking about? These ones that are coming. And then Moses opened his mouth and said, This Egyptian you are seeing today, you, some people say, Shut up, stupid man, you brought this problem to us now. That is what you get from having a personal encounter. And then he told them, and suddenly fire came down and stopped the Egyptian from coming to them. And then God parted the Red Sea. And then they entered. And when they entered the Red Sea, the Bible says Pharaoh are saying to do the same, trying to do the same, enter the Red Sea too. Now you may be wondering, why will most Pharaoh enter the Red Sea? That is enough to scare anybody. And then you are following some people. Despite all the things that have happened there, your people have warned you and said, this is not Moses so. Because they thought initially it was Moses, the little magic, and they have learned together. That was what they thought Moses was doing. When he threw down rod, they threw down their own down. The Moses rod became their own became. And then Moses turned water to blood. They turned water to blood. And so, but at a point, 
they went to Pharaoh and said, this one is not Moses, so this is God's finger. This is the finger of God. With all those things, Pharaoh still entered the Red Sea. And you'll be wondering, why will a man be so gullible? He's not gullible. Read the book of Ezekiel chapter 29, 28, 29. You will see in that two, those chapters, you will see where the Bible talked about Pharaoh. He said, the Pharaoh, the great dragon that lies in the midst of his river. So the real power that is behind the throne of Pharaoh is a dragon spirit in the midst of water. And so to a Pharaoh, you are entering into the water. You don't know that this is our powerhouse. And so Pharaoh entered into the water with them. But you don't know God. The God has said in the book of Ezekiel, he said, you that is saying the water is your own. He said, I will put a hook in your mouth and I will bring you out. You will know that I am the one who created the water. That God dealt with Pharaoh where Pharaoh thought his power was. And that was his plan when he was telling Moses to go through that land. Because if they have gone through the safe land of 11 days, 11 days later, Pharaoh will have gone there to bring them back. But he took them through his own way and settled the issue of Pharaoh with them forever. I am praying for you. May the Lord give you the grace to have an encounter with him. Amen. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. You see, there are some battles that are reoccurring. They are coming up and coming up because you have not actually allowed the will of God that will settle them. And because you didn't follow the will of God that would have said to them, they, they, you follow the other way that you know, the way of your friend, the counsel of your brother, of your boss, you know, you follow that way. And so it looked like as if you won the battle, but the battle has come back because that journey, the enemy has come to the place and they are ready again. But if you have gone the way of God, the way of the wilderness, it would have set to Pharaoh in the Red Sea forever and his souls. I am praying for you. May the Lord grant you the grace to have an encounter with him. Amen. So if you need to be assured, if you want the, this assured rest, what you actually need is an encounter with the Lord. I will run it over one more time. And, but before I do that, I would like that you read 1 John chapter 3. I mean, 1 John chapter 2, sorry, verse 15. 1 John 2 verse 15. It's a very popular, I mean, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abided forever. There are three major problems, three major weapons of the enemy. It is called the lost of the flesh, the lost of the eye, and the pride of life. The lust of the flesh. You want to be everywhere. You want to be everything. You want to be the governor. You want to be the pastor. You want to be the this. And so even when God is saying, do this one, your, your eye, your heart is somewhere else. The pride of life. Something is telling you your mates are somewhere now. And you don't, you don't know that you don't have mates. A man of destiny has no mates. There is nothing called contemporary. Everyone is a temporary company. You will just have them for some time and keep moving. And go your own way. And so when you begin to say, these are my contemporaries, they are doing this already, and you are running, the danger is that you are likely to run out of your way. And then you see, when you miss your way and you keep running, you will never get to where you are going. Because once you miss your way, eh? if you want to go to Prayer City now, and then you get to Osho, the Maitu Expressway, 
and then you now turn right and you face my two. Will you ever get to prayer city? No matter how much you are, now how much the speed you are employing, you will never get there. Because you have missed your way. And that's why I'm praying for you that anyone that Satan will send to help you to miss your way, may the Lord separate you from such fellow. In the name of the Lord Jesus. There were so many people that troubled Moses. But he was a focused man, at least to some level, that he knew what God was saying and he was pursuing it. You see, Moses missed it at a point because God told him, your people are complete, your people are doing committing sin. I can't be with them. But I will send my angels to be with you to lead you. And the angel of the Lord was there with them. And when each time the angel will arise, Moses will rise up and say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemy be scattered. But at a point in time, Moses went to go and talk to his brother in law. His name is Obab. He told Obab, he said, You know, you people are wilderness people. I'm sure you know the way we are in the wilderness. Can you lead us to the promised land? God said, I will send my angel. You are asking Obab. And of course, Obab led them 40 years. They were together in the wilderness, Mary Gorandi. Until God said, turn left. You have been in camp around this place for too long. Now turn left. Obab, that they were following, did not know the way. I am praying for you. May God not leave you to your friends. Amen. Ah, you are not saying the amen that I want. Yeah. May the Lord not leave you to the help of your friends. Yeah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. That was what happened to the children of Israel. He left them to Obab. And Obab was there with them, wasting away for 40 years. Because they shifted their attention from God, from the angel. And then they shifted to Obab. Anyone that Satan has carefully arranged to shift your attention from God so that you will continue to struggle, may the Lord separate you from such fellow. In the mighty name of Jesus. You need the Lord, you need the encounter with the Lord so that with that, you will be able to see in a magnified form the promises of God. It is these promises of God that will deliver you from lust. When you know what God is, has promised, you won't be bothered about. You see, the, this, I'm closing now. The disciples asked Jesus. They say, what is our reward for leaving everything to follow you? I, I hope you remember that. I'm, I'm sure you, I pray that you are Bible students. Eh? If you actually want to succeed with the Lord as a, as a child of God and make heaven and make and be fulfilled here, you must be a friend of the Bible, a good student of the Bible, and then you must learn to have many versions of the Bible, not just King James. Yeah? I don't have time to go into all of that because I still have some places to go. Well, but please, um, you must be a good student of the Bible. Now, they asked Jesus and said, hope all these things will not just remain like this, oh. And Jesus told them, I said, look, nobody will leave father, mother, house, everything and follow me and will not get something here and in the world to come. Was that not what Jesus told them? But do you know that when Jesus was saying all of that, to some people it was real. But to a Judas it was not real. You know what he was doing? He was putting his hand into the pocket of the fellowship and was pulling money to spend. And then after some time, he thought of it and said, all this little, little money that I am removing, let me cuckoo sell the master himself and so that I can blow. <laughs> and so he decided to sell Jesus himself and then he got a very large sum of money. Why will he do such a thing? The promise, all those promises that Jesus gave them were not real to him. Because if they were, he wouldn't do that. But to the rest of the apostles, you know what happened? The Bible says after Jesus had left, while Jesus was here, they didn't see those things. But when Jesus left, you know what happened? The Bible says people will sell their properties and bring it to where? 
and brought it to the apostles. And so, the apostles were now in charge of large money. The little one, Judas God, he killed himself. Why? Because the promise that God gave, Jesus gave them, was not real to them. Something inside him killed those promises because despite the fact that he was so close to Jesus, he was still very far from him. My prayer is that you will not be far from the Lord. Amen. May the Lord draw you closer to himself Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's rise to our feet. Draw me near, near our blessed Lord, to the cross where thou draw me near, near our blessed Lord. To thy precious bleed. Draw me near. Sing it, it's a prayer. You are praying. All eyes close. To the cross. Where thou art. Draw me near. Nera, nera to the Lord, draw me nera, nera to the Draw me nera, oh God, draw me nera, nera to the Lord, my song every day. Draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. This is my song, my song. If you are here this afternoon and you have not given your life to Jesus, I will, I will encourage that you do that now. Because I would like to pray with you. If you know you have you you have given your life to Christ, but you know you have you have gone cold. You have gone cold. You are not doing what you should do, and you are compromising in some areas. I would like that you come forward so that I can pray with you together now. You want to you want the Lord to refire you, you want new help from the Lord. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord this afternoon? Just come forward very quickly as you sing this song. Nearer to thee, Lord, my song every day. If you are coming, just come quickly and kneel down before the Lord. Nearer, nearer, nearer. Lord, my son, Father, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Two more times, and I will be praying. Lord, my son, Father, draw me Draw me nearer. One more time, and I'll be praying. My son, you draw me nearer. Draw me nearer. Eternal Father, eternal God, eternal merciful Savior. You are our eternal benefactor. You are the one that will not change, and that's why we are alive. Lord, here are your children before you this day. 
and they are trusting that you will be saved and that you will reconcile them back to you and that you will refire their lives as the case may be. Lord, I am praying for them that whatsoever is it that the enemy have stationed strategically to weary them and weary your grace in their lives. Father, let such be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Lord, I am praying for them that you send your fire into their spirits. You send your fresh fire to their souls. You send your fresh fire to their bodies. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, I am specifically asking that you will make them wiser than their enemies. You will make them stronger than those who are setting traps for them. In the name of the Lord Jesus. That hereafter, they will become the carriers of your fire in their generation. In the name of the Lord Jesus. And that your will will be done in their lives. Lord, whatsoever you think that they have missed because of that, we ask that mercifully you will restore in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray.